Praise the Lord, the brethren. I greet you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. This is another time, another opportunity again with you to this program of Hour of Value. Wherever you are, just take with me a little moment of prayer. Let us pray together and ask God to help us to listen his word and also to be bold to speak on his behalf. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. I humble myself. I know that you are God above all gods. You are God above all people. You are mighty God. Glorious God. Powerful God. However, Lord, you ask us to pray in your name and receive whatever we want. Lord, we know that we're in the month of victory. This is the last month. We know that you have been with us. We have seen, Lord, victories all around us. You have been a good God. You have been a merciful God, a powerful God. Thank you for the victory we have in your name. Every day, Lord, you give us a victory, victory over situation, circumstances, over Satan and the demons, victory over our flesh, victory over this world, victory over man. We thank you, Jesus. Today, we ask you again to be with us and to fulfill your victory in us. And let this be a total victory, total deliverance in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for being here again to this wonderful time in this program of uh, Hour of Value. Today, this is my last, my last sermon about the victory. This is the last month. Uh, are we, as I told you, I spoke about the victory, wrestling, sorry, wrestling with the man, wrestling with Satan. Now we are talking about wrestling with God and prevail. This is a is the toughest topic. Does a man wrestle with the God and the win? Maybe we can wrestle with the other man and the win. We can wrestle with Satan, with Jesus, with the blood of Jesus, with the powerful Holy Ghost. We overcome. How can anyone wrestle, wrestles with God and <laughs> get victory? This is the toughest, toughest topic. But I will try today to explain, to talk with you. How it is possible to wrestle with God and prevail and get the victory. Maybe you can say, preacher, it's not possible. God is almighty God. How just a, a human being can wrestle with God and prevail. I do understand. And maybe you, you are right. But there is a passage in the Bible. This passage, these verses, explain very well about wrestling with God and uh, have victory. So let us read these verses, Genesis 32, verse 22 
up to it. And he arose that night, Jacob, he is Jacob, and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. And the man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, Jacob, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day the children of Israel do not eat the muscles that shrunk, which in is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. Amen. Amen. This is a long story, but I will try just to explain a little bit about the struggle Jacob had. Jacob, first of all, was the twin of Isaac and Rachel, sorry, Rebecca. His brother, his twin brother was Esau. Esau was a twin brother to Jacob. But Jacob fled to Mesopotamia, Padan Aram, because there was a problem between him and his twin brother. And his twin brother vowed to kill him. When he was vowing to kill him, his mother, his mother Rebecca, heard, heard it. And he told Jacob, you must flee. Go to my brother. Go to my father's home. Which is your uncle. Go to your uncle. For a certain period, so the anger of your brother may be diminished. He was furious against Jacob because Jacob took his blessing from his father. His father, Ezra, uh, Isaac, was old. And when he was going to bless Ezra, Jacob came. And Jacob twisted. He changed his voice, he changed his skin. Then he came before his father, he said, I am Ezra, so please bless me as a first God. 
So Isaac blessed Jacob. When Esau came, he told his father, Father, now I'm here. I'm ready to be blessed. Please bless me. Then the father said, My son, someone was here. He told me that he was Esau. And I blessed him. Then Esau cried bitterly so much. He cried, he cried, he cried bitterly. Then he asked his father, he said, Father, don't you have any other blessing to give me? The father said, no. I have given all, all the blessing I had. So I didn't refrain myself to bless him. I gave him all the blessings I have. So Ezo cried, cried bitterly. Then he vowed to kill Jacob. So Jacob fled. He went to his uncle, Laban. There he served 21 years. He was a shepherd. But being a shepherd, he was rewarded two wives, Rachel and Leah. Then two female servants. Leah had a maid servant and Rachel had a maid servant. At the time, those two servants also became the wives of Jacob. So Jacob had four wives, if I can say that. You can say, wow, it polygamy allowed <laughs> at those time, those people were, remember, they were not religious people. They were secular people. They were in their culture. Today we take them as a spiritual people because God has working so hard in their lives. But at that time, they were just like other people. They were secular. They didn't know about God, even if they knew about Him. But they, it was. It was a long journey for God to, to remodel them, to, 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 to prepare them, and to, to block them. So they may become uh, people God wants them to be. So wrestling with God is the toughest topic, but also easiest. By reading this verse, we read that Jacob, when he was now returning home with uh, two wives and uh, two concubines, four wives, and 11 children, at that time Benjamin was not there. Benjamin is the only son of Jacob who was born in the promised land. Canaan. But other were born in Mesopotamia, Padan Aram. So he decided to go back home. When he decided to go back home, but he remembered but that his brother, Ezo, is still alive and he's awaiting the right time to fight against him, even to kill him. So he knew what was waiting him on the other side. So he was very fearful. After crossing the fold of Jebok, the Bible said that he took them, the wives, children and all things they have they went over they crossed over uh, Jabok River then he left alone Jacob was alone no one was there the wives the children livestock everything they had were gone he was alone. 
he was alone. For you to win, for you to win, to have a victory, you must reach the point where you stay alone. Because our God is not God of mass people, of a crowd. No, he's not in a crowd. He is a personal God, individual God. He wants you to be alone. When you will be alone, then you will see your God coming. Sometimes you are alone even if you are with people. You can feel loneliness among many people because you don't have mindset like them, you don't have thought like them, you don't behave like them, you, you find yourself alone. You find yourself alone. You are struggling alone. You can become alone when your wife is there, your children are there, your husband is there. They, they don't notice, but inside of you, you are alone. At this point, be ready to fight with God and win the battle. I wish you to win this battle because this is the greatest battle you have ever, ever seen in your life. And the victory is ahead. Praise the Lord. So when he was left alone, the Bible said that a man came and wrestled, wrestled with him until the breaking of day. He was there alone. Suddenly, a stranger man came. They started to fight, to fight, to fight. He knew that this man was not Ezo. But he was ready to fight Ezo. He knew that Ezo was a powerful guy. And by his uh, a secret services, he knew, he knew that Ezo is coming with 400 people to kill him. So he sent wives, he sent the children, he sent uh, shepherds to, to, to go and to, to, to give uh, Je uh, Ezo present. So when he saw those presents, his anger will cool down. He knew that this will work. But suddenly, another man, another strange man came and wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Wow. The Bible said, this strange man, this man was powerful, but Jacob also was powerful because he was fighting. For him it was either death or life. He was fighting for his life. Jacob didn't have any alternative. He wrestled with the man. He wrestled with him. He wrestled with him. He wrestled with him. The Bible says, when this man who was wrestling with him saw that the day is coming, what he did, he touched the socket of his hip. He touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of his hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then this stranger person said, let me go for the day breaks. Oh, Jacob was not Jacob. He became a paralytic man because he couldn't stand. But he was very, very strong upon this guy. He took him tightly. He couldn't leave him alone. Then the guy said, let me go. For the day breaks. Jacob realized that this is not a normal person. This is angel of God. This is God. Then he said, yes, I will not let you go. 
unless you bless me. Unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then this angel of God told him, tell me what is your name? Jacob said, my name is Jacob. He said, okay, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men. Last time I told you, struggling with men, wrestling with men. You wrestled with God and you wrestled with men. Wow. And you have prevailed. Praise the Lord. This is a good news now. You have struggled. You have wrestled with God and men. And you become a winner. You prevailed. Then Jacob saying, Tell me your name, I pray. The angel said, Don't ask me my name. But I will bless you. He blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the blessed Peniel, which means I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Then he closed over Peniel, the sun rose, but he limped on his hip. He couldn't stand well, he couldn't walk. Oh, he limped, this guy was not normal again. There was some transformation inside in him. He was broken. He was broken. He was broken. He, his hip was broken. He was now oh, going not straight forward because he had a problem. His hip he had a problem in the joint of his hip because the angel of God touched him touched the socket of his hip. So, what does it mean wrestling with God? How can we wrestle with God? Is it possible? Maybe human being physically can wrestle. I understand that. Maybe with Satan we can wrestle when we have the spiritual weapons, when we have the blood of Jesus. But how can we wrestle with God just I will tell you two things that will help you to understand what, how, how we can wrestle with God and prevail. Number one, wrestling with God means a prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer is the prayer that you pray and get answer. You talk to God, then God answer. The impossibilities become possibility. Prevailing prayers is wrestling with God. Let us read in James 5, 15, 18. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will will raise him up, and if he has committed sin, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and he, the, 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 the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. When Elijah prayed, he was, he was uh, wrestling with God. This is called a prevailing prayer. The prayer that you pray honestly. You pray fervently. We pray with conviction, with faith, until you have a solution until you have solution. Moses prayed and God answered his prayer, even if it was a very difficult. Joshua prayed, the sun stopped, the moon stopped their, course, their courses, and God answered his prayer. Samuel prayed, then God answered his prayer. 
Remember the widow in Luke chapter 18, the Bible say, Jesus gave this parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Yeah, if there was a, in certain city a judge who did not fear God and not regard a man. No, there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within he himself. Though I do not fear God, not to regard a man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, listen here, Jesus spoke about the prevailing prayer. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out and day, out day and the night to him? Though he bears long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Speedily. God will respond to them speedily. The, 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 the Luke 18 is the parable of Jesus that motivate, motivated us to pray, to have this prevailing prayer. The prayer that brings answer. Amen. Number two. Wrestling with God and, uh, and get a victory is to please God. Pleasing God. When you please God, you wrestle with Him and you win. You win the battle. You win a victory. When you please God in your ways, you please God in your thinking. You please God in your attitude. You please God in your words. You please God in your action. You will bend Him and He will release His blessing. Pleasing God is prevailing upon Him. 1 John 3.22, the Bible says, Whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandment and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. In whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandment. And we do those things that are pleasing His sight. When we obey God, when we please Him, we bend Him. We wrestle with Him and we win, we prevail. Just to please God, you will see. By pleasing God, Proverbs 16, 7, 7 Proverbs 16, 7, the Bible says, When a man's way please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. You see, when we please God, God, he makes even our enemies to please us, to be in peace with us. Did the same story about Jacob and Ezo. After pleasing God, when Ezo came, trying to kill Jacob, when he saw Jacob, he felt a peace. He felt a reconciliation. He felt forgiveness. Then he embraced him. He said, my brother, my brother, you are my brother. I cannot harm you. I cannot harm you. You, 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 you know why? Jacob wrestled with God and he pleased God. When you please God, even your enemies, even you are great, great enemies. We become friends. Amen. The Bible says in Genesis 30, 33, 1, 17, we read that they made a covenant. They reconciled. They, they, become, they became again friends, siblings, twins, brother. The, the, the peace agreement came between these people. My brother, my sister, I want just to encourage you. This is a month, we, we finish this month of victory. Pray until you have a solution. Prevailing prayer and pleasing God We help you to wrestle with God and win the battle. I want to pray 
for you. So in your prayer, you can pray until something happens. Until God touch you. Until you have your solution. And in your ways, may God be pleased with your ways, with your thoughts, and your, your actions. Dear Lord, I come before you with my brother, with my sister. Let him, let her have a prevailing prayer. The prayer that brings solution. Let him, Lord, please you. Let his heart, his attitude, his behavior obey you and please you. From now, I pray, Lord, that you may give him the spirit of prayer so he can pray until he gets solution from you. He may have the spirit to obey your commandment and to please your sight, to please you, to, to please your heart. So you can help him, Lord, to overcome their enemies. If Jacob won the battle to his brother, who is very, very, very angry to him, but by pleasing you, they reconciled and they get peace. I know in the same way you can bless my sister, you can bless my brother, you can be with him and you can touch him. Let him, let her bless you and please you. The, the rest of his life, he may, she may please you, she may be with you, and she may have the spirit of prevailing prayer. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you.